Okay, so requirements for this lecture are that you know how to start a container from previous lectures. And we just finished the last lecture talking about seeing what's going on in a container from the outside. And this is all about getting into a container to mess around with the inside. So there's a few commands that we can use. The first one is container run with a dash IT. And we'll talk about how the dash IT works to actually get a shell inside the container. And then for running containers that you want to run a second process, you can also use the container exec and we'll show several examples of that. And then along the way, we're going to actually mention a few differences between a regular Linux distribution like Ubuntu for installing on a virtual machine or on hardware, and then what those Linux distros are like inside of a container. Let's get started. So looking into a container from the outside is very handy at times. But one of the first questions that people often ask me is how do I get into the container and actually do things in it live from the command line? And sometimes people confuse this with wanting an SSH server inside their container so they can SSH into it. But we don't actually need to do that because we have several commands at our disposal that let us get a shell inside the container itself while it's running. And the first one is just the docker container run command but we're gonna specify a few extra options. We're gonna do a dash IT. Now the dash IT is actually two separate options. And if I just show the help real quick, you can see that the T actually gives us a pseudo TTY or a prompt similar to what you would have through SSH. And then if we scroll up to I, and that's really what allows us to keep that session open so that we can keep running more commands. So if we do a docker container run dash IT and then run another Nginx, let's call it proxy. And then we're gonna have to specify an alternate command. If you remember at the beginning of this section where we talked about the format of the docker command line, when you're doing a docker container run, as you can see through the help, here at the end, after the image, you have optional command and arguments that you can send into this new container that you're about to start to tell it what to run. The image has a default command in it that we will see later how to configure. But if you wanted to change what was run on startup, you can do that right from the run line. So let's just say bash, because bash is one of the common shells that you would usually find in a container that'll give you a shell to work with. And look at that, I'm in a prompt. Now you'll notice my prompt says root, which is the user that the container started as. It doesn't actually mean I'm root on the host. It just means I'm acting as root on the container. And that number after it is actually the container ID. So if I do a ls dash al, I get a full listing of everything where I'm at. And you can see that I'm in the root path of the file system inside the container. So I'm actually looking at all the files inside the container, which is based on the Nginx image. And from here, I could go change config files. I could download packages from the internet and do just about any common administrative thing that you would do from a normal shell. So to get out of the shell when you're done, I'm gonna type exit, like you would with any shell. And now that container has stopped. If we actually did a docker container ls, you would not see it there. Remember, we called it proxy. So I have to do a dash A and it's there. Now see the command that it run. The default command for an Nginx container is to run the Nginx program itself. But when we typed our last command, we changed that default program to actually be bash, which gave us our shell. And when we exited the shell, the container stopped because containers only run as long as the command that it ran on startup runs. And since we changed that to bash, simply exiting bash quit it. Now, what if I used a full distribution of Linux instead of actually doing the Nginx, let's do a full Ubuntu. And it's actually gonna download the Ubuntu image and place me in the prompt of this new container. If you've ever used Ubuntu, you know about the apt package manager. And so I can use that here, just like I would in a standard Ubuntu server. And I could actually install something, apt-get install-yes curl. Now, 
The thing about Ubuntu and other distributions inside a container is that they're usually very minimal. A live CD or a download of the ISO of Ubuntu, which you would normally put on a virtual machine, is going to have a lot more software installed by default than a Ubuntu container, which is really a very minimal version of Ubuntu that you can always add more software to with the apt package manager. So now this running container has curl installed and I can use it just like I would on a local machine. And once I exit the shell, again, it will actually stop the container. Docker container ls. And you notice I don't see it. And there's the Ubuntu image that we just ran. Now, if I started that container up again, it would have curl installed in it. But if I created a new container from the Ubuntu image, that different container would not have the curl command line installed. Now, what if we wanted to rerun that container and get bash right back in it again? Well, we could use the docker container start command. Now, you'll notice it's slightly different when we start an existing container, but it's similar to the IT, it's just an AI. And then the name of our container, Ubuntu. And you'll notice we're right back in it and I can curl Google again and it works. And if I exit, it stopped it again. Now, what if I want to actually see the shell inside a running container that's already running something like MySQL or Nginx? Well, we can do that too. And that's using the exec command, docker container exec. And you can see we have a few options here. And the most common one is, let's say I wanna jump into the MySQL container because I need to do some administrative stuff on the MySQL itself. I could do the IT again, and then the name of the container, and then the program I wanna run. And in this case, again, it's bash. And I'm now in the container with MySQL. I can actually do a PSAUX right inside the container, which lists the processes. And this will, of course, show me the MySQL daemon that's running in the background, as well as the bash process that I'm currently sitting in, as well as the PS command that I just ran. And in this shell, I could jump into MySQL itself with the MySQL command line. And you'll notice when I exit this bash shell, and do an ls, MySQL is still running because the Docker container exec actually runs an additional process on an existing running container. It's not going to affect the root process for the MySQL daemon. So let's try one more. As you can see here, this is very useful for jumping into containers when you need to troubleshoot or when you need to change something slightly on a running system, as well as using containers of different distributions to give you the environment you would have if you had a full machine like a Ubuntu or an Alpine. Now what's Alpine? We haven't mentioned Alpine before. Alpine is another distribution of Linux, but Alpine is designed to be very small. It's actually only five meg in size. If I do a Docker pull Alpine, that will pull down the latest Alpine image. And if I do a Docker image LS, you can actually see how small the Alpine image is compared to the Ubuntu. So the neat thing about Alpine is that it also comes with its own package manager. And so you'll see Alpine as an option on Docker Hub a lot in the next section when we go over images in Docker Hub. But for now, let's do a bash shell inside of Alpine. Docker container run, IT, Alpine, bash. Now what just happened here? Why did I get an error? It tells me that it's starting the container process and it caused the executable file bash to not be found in the path. And what that really means is that bash isn't in the container. And this goes back to the concept that we can only run things in the container that already exists in its image when you started it, or maybe something that you've added later through the exec or run commands. But in this case, how would I get in the Alpine image? Well, Alpine is so small that it doesn't actually have bash in it, but it does have sh. So we can replace the command with sh, which is not quite as full featured as bash, but does get us right into the container. And if you were to search Alpine Linux on the internet, you would learn that its package manager is apk. 
And we could actually use that to install Bash if we really needed it. Okay, just a recap real quick of what we learned in this lesson. So we learned about the dash IT option for container run, which gives us the equivalent of an interactive shell to actually do things in the container as we would if we were SSH'd into a server of some sort. Then we learned a new command for Docker container exec with the IT that does exactly the same thing as run, but it does it on an existing container that's running, not starting a new container. And last, we learned a little bit about Alpine and how that's different from major Linux distributions and how it's actually like four meg in size and ideal for container images.